Okay, um, this is a worked example for a probability problem. This is courtesy of an Excel, was it from a 2023 uh, A level paper? Um, it's quite an interesting one, this, because it's um, it's sort of got conditional probability sort of wrapped in with it. Um, and um, we're actually working with probabilities that for which we have to use algebraic. Uh, expression so um, uh, quite an interesting one and uh, fair play to the person who set this question this is a really imaginative question um, let's have a look Tis Sam is playing a game she uses a ball cup and a spinner the random variable x represents the number that the spinner lands on when it is spun probability distribution is given in the following table a b c d well we don't know any numbers there at all uh, <clears throat> So, um, uh, well, we know the the the, the value of the, the random variable, 20, 50, 80, 100, and so on. Uh, so to play the game, the spinner is spun to obtain a value of x. Spin the spinner, get a value of x. Tisan then stands x centimetres, so whatever's come up on the spinner, 20, 50, or whatever, x centimetres from the cup, and tries to throw the ball into the cup. Okay. And the event S represents the event that Tissam successfully throws the ball into the cup. So I think we can see that actually um, the higher the value on the spinner, then the more difficult it's going to be to get in the cup. And we would expect the probability to be lower um, uh, for you know achieving success in that throw. So um, to model this game, Tissam assumes that the probability of success, given that the random variable is x, which of course could be 20, 50, 80, or 100, is equal to k divided by x. So we can see as x is getting bigger, that probability is getting smaller. <clears throat> so given a higher value on the spinner, then the um, probability of success, throwing it in, is going um, to be small. Um, and then this condition is given to us, the probability of success and uh, the value on the spinner being x <clears throat> should be the same, whatever the value of x is obtained from the spinner. Okay, so um, that's um, the bones of the problem, but we asked using Tissam's model to show that C is equal to eight-fifths of B. Right, now so it's, it's a bit of getting your brain around this one. But uh, in order to um, to address this, what um, we're best doing is drawing a probability tree. Okay, so here is our probability tree. We've got these four um, <clears throat> Uh, four different uh, outcomes from the spin of the spinner. Um, we can throw any of these values. And the probability associated with each one is A, B, C, and D. Right, and if we take one each one in turn, what we're saying is the probability of a success, given that we threw a 20, is going to be equal to K divided by 20. Okay, and that's what this statement here is saying. And uh, likewise, the success given that we, the probability of success given that we threw a 50 on the, on the spinner is going to be K over 50 and similarly K over 80 and K 100s in this fourth case. Right, so to complete the leaves on the probability tree, if we multiply the probability, so this is the probability of of this first level times the probability of the second level so multiplying across quite simply so the probability of success and having thrown a 20 um, is equal to the product a times k over 20 a k divided by 20 and then uh, well we're not interested in the failure actually because the can the 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 the, the given here is that all those successes um, should be the same. 
So we're just interested in these leaves here. So the second one obviously is going to be BK over 50. That's uh, just applying the same multiplication. Um, CK over 80 and DK over 100. And all these are the same value. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so just to write that out, we've got AK by 20 equals BK by 50 equals CK by 80 equals DK by 100. And we can glean from that, from that sort of the, the, the middle two components of that string there, that therefore that C is equal to eight fifths B, the case cancel out, and we're just left with that. So that is what we're asked to show for part A. <clears throat> Right, and then he goes on to say, find the probability distribution of X. Well, what do we know? I mean, we've got all this, these these relationships here. Uh, we also know that A plus B plus C plus D are going to add up to one. So we've got a sort of a, a bit of a system of um, uh, equations here. Um, I think the, the easiest way to solve this um, is to have some kind of structured Trial and error, really, I think. Um, so I I basically sort of say, well, let's just let let's let's say, for instance, that D is equal to a hundred. And then if we just work through this, this is a sort of condensed form of these relationships. Uh, a equals two fifths B, B equals five eighths C, and C equals four fifths D. So if we let D equal a hundred. What would that give us? Okay, well, if we work that backwards, we're going to have to see that C is 80, and then from this one, then B is 50, and from this, then uh, A is going to be 20. All right, well, um, all those will add, that add, that adds up to 250. Well, of course, we actually want it to add up to one, don't we? Um, but no matter, because now, if we just divide all these... Um, uh, all these figures by 250, then they will add up to one, won't they? So uh, so that's going to give us D equals two, uh, 100 250ths, 80 250ths, B is 50 250ths, and A is 20 250ths. So as a decimal, then A equals 0 0.08, 0 0.20, 0 0.32 for C, and 0.4 for D. Okay, so... <clears throat> Um, and those are, uh, and so that's basically is our probability distribution for X. I suppose I could write a, do a table like this and, uh, and just put those probabilities in, but, uh, but that, that suffices for the purpose of this, uh, this video. Uh, there is a part C to this, which I haven't uh, covered, uh, which is like your bonus for one, but uh, it's not, doesn't, uh, not really needed in order to kind of illustrate what we're doing here with the probability trees. So, um, that's it. Um, yeah, quite a cunning uh, problem. I think it just demonstrates um, yet again in a level maths is that uh, we you know we we might not know the numbers, but we can form our uh, expressions and we can still apply in this case our probability tree and um, come up with our conclusions. So uh, hopefully that has been uh, clear enough. Um, and interesting and helpful and thanks for listening.